Ghent is often described as an underrated city and Belgium as an underrated country. Belgium isn't nearly as popular as countries like France, Spain, and Italy, but has plenty of historic charm to experience and delicious food. Ghent is the third largest city in Belgium with a large population of university students. This region of Europe typically isn't known for being budget friendly, but there's plenty of things to do on a budget in Belgium's medieval Manhattan, Ghent. Known as Medieval Manhattan for its well-preserved medieval center with three UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Walking the picturesque streets and enjoying the architecture is one of the best things to do in Ghent, and best of all, it's free. As you get off the tram in the historic center, you'll see three towering impressive buildings, the Belfry of Ghent, St. Bavo's Cathedral, and St. Nicholas Cathedral. You can check out the interior of the churches for free or pay to take the elevator to the top of the belfry or to see the famous Van Eyck altarpiece. The most famous views of Ghent is definitely Grasley, and a great viewpoint is from St. Michael's Bridge. On sunny days, you'll see families, students, and tourists relaxing along the canal with their legs dangling above the water. A must do in Ghent is a canal tour. It is a bit cheaper than in larger cities like Amsterdam, and if you're only going to pay for one activity in Ghent, this is the one to do. Seeing Ghent from the canals and hearing your guide's interesting stories and silly jokes really brings Ghent to life. An easy place to take a tour is right across from Grasley on the Cornlay side. It's a 40 minute tour in the winter or 50 minutes during the summer. It's not necessary to book in advance, but I've included a link to purchase your ticket in advance if you prefer. As you continue exploring the historic center, you'll pass the Butcher's Hall, now being renovated and turned into bike storage, the Castle of the Counts, entrance is 13 euros and includes an audio guide by a Belgian comedian, and Grootmark, home to the Farmer's Market and Artisan Market in the spring and summer. In Grootmark, you can also find the cutest cart that sells the traditional Ghent treat, Kuberdons. These triangular candies are also called Nozikis, or little noses. The colorful candies have a solid crust with a soft, gummy interior and are traditionally raspberry flavored, but there were some other flavors as well, like apple and lemon. They look so cute and Instagram perfect in the cart, but you can get them for half the price at other candy stores like Leonidas. They were 15 euros at the cart, but only 7 euros for the same amount of candy at Leonidas. If you're on a budget, I'd recommend getting both this local Ghent treat and lots of delicious Belgian chocolates at Leonidas. If you're interested in more traditional sweets, check out Confiserie Temmerman near the Patterson neighborhood. Even the exterior of the building is a treat for the eyes. There aren't many free public bathrooms in Ghent, so it's good to be prepared with a few euro coins, but there is a free bathroom across from the castle near the old fish market. It was relatively clean as far as public bathrooms go, but there wasn't soap, so come prepared with a way to clean your hands after, just in case. Vrijdemarkt is yet another square with a market on Fridays. Vrijdemarkt actually means Friday market, and then they also do have a market on Saturdays too. In the past, visiting royals were greeted here, but executions also took place in the square. I don't think they were happening at the same time, but still kind of a weird combination. The next must-do activity while on a budget in Ghent is a visit to Graffiti Street. Tucked away between Vrijdemarkt and the Belfry, this alley is an always-changing open-air museum for street art. If you're lucky, you'll spot some new art going up. It is a short one-block street, so a visit won't take very long, but if you love street art, I've included a link to a map with more art to find throughout the city. And last, 
lastly, you have to eat, so why not try some typical Belgian food? Frites and waffles are some of Belgium's most famous eats, and you can find lots of great options in Ghent. Being on a budget, we got fries and other fried snacks at Fritua France Hoyer, and we really enjoyed it. It's hard to go wrong with fries, and it's fun to sample different sauces. Uh, you can also check out Fritz Atelier. It's one of the most famous fries places in Ghent and a bit more expensive, but still very affordable. For waffles, it's a few blocks from the city center, but we tried Gaufray and they were delicious and quick and cheap. Belgian waffles are thick and fluffy with crystallized sugar on the outside and really superior to all other waffles in my opinion. If you're on a budget and not looking to pay for many activities, a day in Ghent is probably enough since the historic city center is small and easily walkable. If you're planning on staying multiple days, you'll likely want to pay for entrance to places like the castle, the belfry, and other museums. Check out the Ghent city card to see if it's a good fit for your plan since it includes entrance to the top tourist places, a boat tour, and public transportation. Public transportation is two euros and 50 cents in Ghent and easy to use. However, when we tried to buy tickets for, with our card, the machine wouldn't take our card or a friend's card. So come prepared with a card that you can either tap to pay when you board the tram or bus or use the Daylin app to buy tickets or passes. Ghent is a beautiful, underrated, historic city with plenty to do as a budget traveler on a day trip or a long weekend with a bit more budget for museums and sightseeing.